Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Justin Fields, round two, part two. We're going Ohio State versus Penn State. Fired up for this one. Really a full spectrum of different types of plays. Some wow, guaranteed first round plays, and then some head scratchers, some ball security issues. Really the full spectrum over the course of this game. And so fired up for this one. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> If you dig this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. Then you want some free information about RPOs, download the five keys to successful RPOs. It'll be up in the corner, click on it, go over to the QB School website, download it, get the insight, get the knowledge behind how RPOs are constructed to be aggressive and kind of a comprehensive package. So let's dive into the video. One more speed bump before we get into this thing. This is just a compilation of highlights and lowlights from this game. If you want the entire game, get over to the QB School Patreon community. Got the full game analysis over there. Again, the deepest dives on the internet go deep into every single play over the course of a game. Provides a lot more context into how these plays are constructed and really the overall performance of what Fields does in this game. So let's dive into this one. All right, so the first one we look at here is a fake bubble down here. They're at a quads. They're going to run a fake bubble to the number four. And he ends up basically throwing it up, a jump ball down here to the bottom. I really think this is a clear route. Now, it might be kind of a variation of a double move, but it's not the greatest route by any means. And I just don't quite get it because it looks like he could really go through his progressions here. And this could be a really special play. So let me draw up exactly what I'm thinking concept-wise. Normally, when you run these bubbles, all these guys come off and fake stock block, and then they get up into the seam area. And it's a little bit different out of quads. You don't see it quite as much. But this idea of fake bubble here, and then this play, he runs it clear to me. So this guy comes up, fake blocks, and then really the, where the ball should go, in my opinion, comes up here and this little swing route right here where this guy settles in this whole area. Because what ends up happening is this corner gets blown off the top with this clear or slow clear, whatever you want to call it. And there's nobody here in this kind of swing area out to where the ball should go. So you just love to see him get through his reads a little bit is kind of the, the way that I would think about this. So watch it again here and just kind of go with me as far as there's the bubble. You know, it's not there for whatever reason. And you can see that swing, you know, that just that kind of, it almost ends up being like a cover two hole shot. Now it's not cover two and it's not a hole shot, but versus quarters, look, you can see it develop. He basically just predetermines. He's going, he's letting that thing go. That corner's way over the top of that go on the outside or clear. And so, you know, decision-making here, probably not what you'd expect. This is the first pass of the game too. Again, I love the design. They obviously were taking a shot. They had some great plays out of empty in this game. But again, he's just predetermining. I'm going to chuck this thing up there. His guy does a nice job going up and playing defense. Almost catches it. But that was a cool scheme, different way to do bubble that I'd never seen before. Fake bubble, and I liked it. So then we come back, and there are some great throws. This throw down here to the bottom of the screen, play action, lets it go with timing. Really early, takes a shot, just an absolute blast to the face. So the design here, I loved it. I would love to see kind of the, the play action a little tighter. We'll look at it from the back end. But watch this throw when he lets this thing go. I'll pause it. He's going to let this thing go. Determination right here. Look at that wide receiver down here to the bottom of the screen. Not anywhere close to coming out of that break. He lets that thing go. It's well in the air before he starts coming out of it. It's a beautiful throw and catch. And he takes, he gets an absolute shot. So I'll let it play real time. And just watch. The other thing about it is the bail technique of the corner down here. He's got his ass to the sideline like that. He can't do anything to an outbreaking route. That's a predetermined, especially with the quarterback under center reverse pivoting out. This is an NFL throw. No doubt about it. That's an NFL throw. Getting popped in the face too. It's outstanding. This is round one stuff right here. So again, watch the just the ball handling here for me. You can tell he probably isn't quite as comfortable under center or doesn't look like it, to be honest with you, because when you come around, you love that ball to be a little bit more in the gut of that running back as opposed to kind of like play faking a ghost. It's almost like they think that they're in eye formation and two's the, the fullback. You know, he's faking nobody, but the timing of it, my goodness, excellent. And then look at the shot. This is playing quarterback at a big time level. One hitch, shot, free runner on you, boom, right in the chest. Love it. So good. Really good. Outstanding. 
So from here, he does it again. This time, you know, again, he the anticipation on these outside the number throws, I think was was surprising to me just because I hadn't heard about this type of ability to be able to do this on him. Basically a speed out. Again, they're, not, now they're just picking on this technique. But this is outstanding coaching. This is outstanding quarterbacking more than anything else. Look when he lets this thing go right here. He's letting it go to a speed out down here at the bottom. Poor number two, bail technique. I mean, that's a strike now. Now, that, that that's outstanding. I mean, this is exciting. Whether you're an Ohio State fan or not, if you're a fan of quarterbacking, this is outstanding. Speed out down here to the bottom versus bail technique. Again, it's a little counterintuitive when you're trying to identify coverage. I'm bringing it back slowly just because I want you to really appreciate. Look where the corner is. Now, they do a little adjustment to motion, which is probably, in my opinion, not the best thing to do with this type of speed out because you bring this adjustment to motion and slowing it down here. See how he's coming in? Well, that corner is always going to be outside. But you get this bail technique where his ass to the, to the sideline. Now, he's got him by leverage right here, pre-snap, but he can't get there. Three no hitch from gun. Let's that thing go. Look at that thing. It's halfway in the air before he comes out of it, and it's a strike. It's paint in the black outside corner. Beautiful. That's that's absolutely elite anticipation, accuracy from kind of a complex formation with a motion adjustment. You can see he's up there redirecting to getting it over to 13, confirming the protection. One, two, three, let it go. Now it's got a little Peyton Manning to it off his arm, off his hand, but it doesn't matter. It's accurate like Peyton too. Now we come down here and get to see another element of his game. They did a bunch of quarterback draws in this game. Not all of them were very successful, but right here, it's a really meaningful down. Middle field closed, man. They just don't have enough guys. And he just exposes them with athleticism. I mean, that's a stride. He can roll. He's an athletic, dynamic dude. And he's fired up at the end of this thing, and he should be. This is a, one of those gotta-have-it-downs. I think it was like a third down, medium. They're going to play man. There just aren't enough people. They try to spy him in this game, too. They try to drop eight, and they just can't handle him. He's that athletic, that dynamic of an athlete right here. I mean, got no chance right there. He's not touched for, shoot, 25 yards. Get fired up. That's it. That's exciting. They do a great job of running him, too. Now, within that space, there are some issues, but they're really kind of high-end issues. And what I mean by that is this is a redirect. He's redirecting the protection up top to this player who's standing kind of right here. So he's doing a great job. He's changing the protection. Now the line is going this way. Well, the problem is, is that technically they only have five guys coming, but this defender, he ends up coming too. So he adds on where normally the only way to get this is to do a full slide by the offensive line because this defensive end is dropping off. Well, even if you do the redirect, even if you go back and say, Hey, Okay, you go out here, offensive line is going out here. You still, as a quarterback, now you are responsible for this player. You, you can't determine unless you got to really make a really obvious and you can tell from the back end that they're not doing a full slide here. They don't anticipate this guy coming off. But it's just the reality of it. He does a nice job of redirecting it, but then he doesn't take it to the next level of, okay, now you got to protect where you normally would go, the solid element of it. Now, I know they're only rushing five, but I mean, the, with the right tackle there, you know, I, I got I got to put that on fields there a little bit. You can tell he's sh he's kind of startled that all of a sudden there's a guy running through. I have a hard time imagining. We can see it from the back end here. Watch them. They're going to go all the way out to 38. Beautiful redirect. This is, this is quarterbacking at a really high level. They see it. I don't know if they're telling him from the sidelines or what, or he just identifies it. If he just identifies it, it's outstanding. We're going to 38. You can see the center. Where are we going? 71. All right, we're going all the way out. There it is. Left guard communicating it. We're going out. We're pushing that way. Well, somebody's got to block six because 18 in a normal world, the left defensive end for us and 99 would be coming. So when six comes, you can see the right tackle does actually a pretty nice job, but the right guard is not tethered in to six coming. So, I mean, they're locked in. He does a nice job fighting back eventually, but they're never going to get to that. So you just got to have an idea. You, you, Even though there's only five guys blocking, they're only rushing five, I got to imagine he's a hot here. So he needs to find, go back, find a way, and see this. The running back, Dobbins, coming across here at the bottom. That's where the ball needs to go. He's hot to the left. There it is. Boom. He's running wide open. Mailbox. 
So just one more time, just to kind of anticipate the entire thing here. You can see the, the procedure. Now, if you are playing hot off that mic, the guy right next to the umpire, he comes, throw it to that shallow. Here it is. Boom. There it is. That was That's the read I would love to see. You can see a mailbox. He's hot. He feels it. But Fields has no idea because he thinks he's blocked up because he did that redirect. That's the thing about it. That's the next level, the next progression for, for quarterbacking at a really high level. So again, let's let, let it play here full game speed. They get him up, peek to the sideline, whatever change they make. Now we're full, we're sliding left, three man, half slide left. Okay, now if six comes, we're gonna be hot. He comes, you gotta throw it to this shallow coming right across the field. You can see it, he does, he's never looking. He's looking to the right the whole way, he's shocked. Still such a big body, though, that doesn't even go down with a free runner on him, which is impressive, too. So, it's not all perfect by any means. This is a great throw. A little inside slot fade to the guy who's in motion right there. He's going to shift. I love the old slot fade. Just gives you so much room to the outside. And this is in the bucket. Just an absolute beautiful throw. Loved it. Loved the procedure of it. How they get there. They motion across. You know it's man. Slot fade, you have so much room to that outside. Just one, two, three. He does a great job with his eyes. We'll see from the backside to hold that middle field player. And that's just a beautiful throw. Great trajectory up and down. Love it. So from the back end here, watch his eyes. He really holds that kind of middle field player with how he's able to manipulate both his footwork, his shoulders. Everything is good. You see the motion. Guy run with the motion. You know it's man. Watch his eyes right here. One to the right. He knows where he's going. Oh, it's beautiful. And that's a dime. That's outstanding. That's really, really good quarterbacking right there. Moving lots of moving parts, able to take advantage of good scheme and good execution. But within that same space, you know, you just see some inconsistencies. That, that was what one of the things that jumped off the film for me. There were so many really good plays, and then there were so many kind of like, uh, you know, how I, I'm not. I need, you know, I would love for him to have to like walk it through it for us, because there are just too many kind of things where you're concerned. And right here, this is just a great defensive play. And he's got some ball security issues in this game, but I love him <laughs> just right here. This little like faux fight for it too afterwards at the end, try to get in there and try to take it from somebody, but he knows he lost it right here. And this is a great play. They were picking on these defensive ends all game. They had their way at the line of scrimmage, but 18 got him right here. 38 got two balls out against him. And really it's, this is just a nice play, but I think it's important to point out, you know, the, there are ball security issues in this game. So right here, they're just going to do a zone read to the right, this defensive end to the right, and they really get him a little bit. What I mean by that is they're going to come in here and he's going to be able to basically play both. He's going to come up and squeeze this thing so it's going to give Fields a pull read. So then he's going to redirect and get his hand on the ball. His left hand hits the ball. But 38 is also blitzing. So he comes in and right at the end, he rips the ball out of the hands. So it's just a combination of errors here and just more more than anything else, just a really good play by the Penn State defense. And so being able to see it play itself out here, again, we'll watch it a handful of times. You can see how he can play both. That's because they're blitzing this way. So he can take away that, that B gap, then he gets his hand on the ball. Like you can see the ball kind of sl slow this thing down, watch it move. He puts his hand, peanut tilt at that thing right on it. So the ball's loose right there. It's already moving. Then here comes 38 with the pressure, the nickel off the slot, and watch this rip right at the end. Just outstanding. I love it. Boom. There it is. 38 just with the right arm rake. Boom. And there it comes. Christmas. Enjoy. But it happened too many times in this game, and that's just the reality of it. And, hey, I put it on the ground a number of times and get it too, but it's got to be a priority and uh, just got to learn from it and move forward. But to say that it wasn't part of this game would be doing it a, a disservice in the analysis. So again, they made a nice play. It's probably a better defensive play than anything else. But again, you'd love to be able to have a little bit more secure ball handling over the course of the game. Then here we get a double move down at the bottom of the screen. You know, I think this throw probably, this is a great route. Throw it to me is just a little underthrown. And what I mean by that is you'd love to see him kind of lead him to the back five of the end zone, back five of the end zone where this ball comes up. I mean, he gaps him right here. This poor guy. They couldn't get right over here on their left corner or right side on offense all day. 229, he's spinning like a top. But this ball is probably five yards underthrown. You know, you put that on the top of the S, it's a walk-in. Here he's got to go up, make a little bit of a contested play. And there were, you know, I would say over the arching accuracy issues over the course of this game, I showed some really nice throws. He also had some kind of 
wide misses where his guys are just so athletic on the perimeter they could go up and make the adjustments. But right here, this is a great route. You know, probably just a little underthrown, probably a little flat there as far as the touch and trajectory. But again, you know, nitpicky for sure. It's a touchdown. Great play. And then this is probably my favorite play of the game. We'll talk about it a bunch here. But they're going to get a free runner from the left. He's going to spin out and throw kind of a ball going to his left a dime. So we'll talk about the pass pro and the back end. To me, this is a scheme issue, but this is a great quarterback. He can spin out, run into his left, dime. Third down, just beautiful throw. Outstanding. Look at the coach on the sideline. I'm going to take this back just because I love this so much. Slow it back here. Look at the coach on the sideline. Whoever the guy with the white hat is, he is not happy. <laughs> Love when coaches have to jump around like that. Outstanding. So let's talk protection here. There's usually two ways to do it when you got five people protecting. You can either half slide this thing, meaning we're going to go from the uncovered lineman to the to the one side. So it could be either way. It could be this way or this way. Looks like that's what they're doing right here. And what I mean by that is we're going to get these four going this direction to kind of take the first four over there. I think the most sound way to do it versus this front you know, and depending on what level of football you're at, you can get away with this a little bit. But if they're in an odd front right here, they've got their two defensive ends and a nose in. Really, it's it's what I'm used to calling a double duel. So this defender's basically a double fan. And you really leave the nose on an island. You know, you're not going to get a whole lot of centers who like that. But you don't have to fan. It's almost like a double duel. You can often call, if you don't like double, if you don't like double fanning, you can do what's called a molly. Usually where this defender, well, if, if there's nobody blitzing, You'll lock this, and then he will kick out and get the second one. Seen both of them work. Fan, Molly, doesn't matter what you do, but you can't have a free runner like this. That, that's the essence of it. And so I'm not going to put this one on fields, but I am going to say that you know the scheme, they get them up front. And Penn State gets them a few times in this game. You can see right here, they're only bringing five, but they're doing a half slide. So if they're doing a half slide, Fields needs to know, and he needs to be hot to the left. He looks like he has no idea it's coming. Now, he, might, he obviously has some ideas coming because he spins out of it. But you'd love to see him, if he knows it's hot, step to the right and throw hot. Don't necessarily rely on yourself to spin out of it like this. And they're running some variation of mesh. There's no real good hot throws either. But that's a, just go make a play. That's outstanding. So good on so many levels. So the last one we're going to look at here is really kind of an exotic blitz. They're going to bring a safety down here, the one that's standing on the near hash. And they're going to cloud this thing. And there's no good options. You'd love to have this thing picked up, but it's never going to be picked up. And what I mean by that is, you know, they have a tight end who's chipping and releasing. Theoretically, that could be pick this thing up, but it's going to be difficult. And he just, again, the ball security for me, you know, you just hate to see it show up as a pattern like this. And you certainly hate to get hurt on a play like this. So they they're, they almost see it coming. They know it's coming. They're pointing the way out there. This tight end, you would love to have the ability to, instead of just chipping and releasing, to chipping, seeing it right there, really nice chip, but then getting your eyes outside and seeing that nickel come or that safety come. And just unfortunate to have another ball security issue there. So that's a wrap. Justin Fields kind of all over the place, but made enough plays to get a victory. They were running the ball really well in this game too, but still some magical throws, some anticipation throws, some accuracy issues, some ball security issues, some decision-making issues, but then some really spa splash plays too. So looking forward to seeing what he does kind of as a body of work, getting better going into next year. But man, high ceiling, lots of talent, already some great throws. Now just looking kind of to be a little bit more consistent and do it all the time. So let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.